Listen up and learn some creative ways to finance your next hunting property. I'm talking with Flint, who owns over 200 rental units and over 1,300 acres. And he talks about some interesting loan products that he's used over the years to help flip properties like interest only and how once you get to a certain point, banks are much more flexible to work with you. Obviously, they have to follow rules and regulations, but sometimes you can have a little bit more edge as you're going into buying these farms. So really great conversation. Hope you guys enjoy it. My name is Jake Hofer. I'm a land broker out of the state of Illinois, Coner of Exodus. And I'm sending out some books for my buddy, Pat Porter, who's been a guest of the show. And all you have to do is sign up for the email newsletter. I'll send you a personal email and get your address and send it to you shipping on me. So hope you guys take advantage of that. Let's get right into this conversation. Here we go. How important is it for you when you're prospecting these farms for a half to have income or is it not that important? It's just buying it, right? Knowing you can get out. It's of not important to me because you're not going to get a good deal. Uh, uh -huh. I kind of specialize in hunting farms. You know, that's uh -huh. kind of what my niche, in my opinion, public land got really popular, but I think that'll phase out when people realize how hard it is to hunt public land. Cause I've done it. You know, I still do. I mean, a big group of buddies go deer driving every year on public land, have a blast, but public land is tough and it's getting tougher. Yeah. So I think, I think buying your own land to hunt on, is going to be a big deal for, for a long time. That was and a lot I have of, same exact thought. Yeah, a lot of this recreational land, it's selling just as high as anything. You know, so stuff in Calhoun, Pike County, Illinois, it'll sell just as high as you know, most farm land and stuff like that. So it's not a big deal. If I can find something that's got timber, I'll have it appraised and mm -hmm. put that in a listing too. But that's pretty rare. You know, it's rare to find something that's good real crop land or good CRP that's not listed extremely high. Yeah, because I think so many people look for that income or they or or yeah. brings in a different type of buyer too. Do you ever get nervous like you're over leveraged? You, I mean, what's uh, your. You just get used to it, I guess. <laughs> so okay. not, not really. <laughs> no. So you don't get nervous? No, not really. Um, some people are conservative and I'm just not. Like I got friends, you know, like it stresses them out having a big home payment or, you know, like even talking to me stresses them out. And I'm just not like wired like that. Like I, I think about risk, but I just look for good risk in life, honestly. Like it's, you know, a good opportunity is all I look for. You know, I don't really worry too much about it. Do you bank, do you bank with one bank for all these deals or do you shop around? Yeah, I got a local bank, um, good friends with the loan officer and, uh, that's been a huge deal. You know, they, uh, they'll stick, they'll keep loaning me money. Um, so a good local bank, you know, and I don't have to worry about them. Like when, uh, uh, COVID started and everybody just locked down for like a month or whatever it was, I went and I talked to bank president. I said, Hey, you guys like really talk about what, you know, as landlords can do it. Like nobody went to work and everybody just quit paying the rent all at one time. He's like, yeah, we talked about it. And if you don't want to make payments for six months, we'll put it on the backside of a loan. You know, you can make, you know, just loan those six months. Like six and months or six months. Yeah, yeah. Wow. On the backside. And I don't think you're going to have a big bank tell you that, you know? So I like having a small bank. They know your name, you know who they are. They know your kids. And that's been great, you know, and they've treated me great. And like, even on these big land deals, like if I'm buying a piece, let's say you bought a 300 acre farm and you're going to sell 200 and keep a hundred. You know, like my bank, um, I'll just ask them, like, hey, can you give me six months a year interest only while I flip it or whatever? I do interest only on all my stuff, all my land. So that cuts your payment almost in half. So you can make something work if you want to sell off a piece, you know, doing that. So what happens? That's really interesting. So break that down for break that down on a kindergartner level of interest only on a six or 12 month note. Um, well, usually when I'm flipping it, they know what I'm doing, you know. I'll just say, hey, I'm buying 200 acres in Illinois to flip. Uh, let me do a year interest only on it. And then, uh, so my payment's half what I sit on it. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people, I got the idea because a lot of big guys do it on apartment buildings. They'll buy it do interest only for the first year while they remodel it. And so they're not losing money. A lot of times your rentals, you'll lose money first year if you got a, you know, a month or two vacancies, you're doing work to this or that. Uh, so that's kind of where I got the idea from the rental stuff. So rental houses so that's why i just moved over to land i said hey we do the same thing there and they're like yeah it's great so i can buy twice the ground as long as i'm moving it you yeah know, you just gotta be careful i feel like we peaked out like all this information might be use useless whenever interest goes to 10 or 12 percent yeah and is that you know, where you think it's going to go more. to i don't know i mean i'm hearing all kinds of stuff the other day I, I was watching some on fox and they said uh to stop inflation they're gonna have to go above the inflation rate rate which is so that's at nine yeah, nine now. So I was like, I was hoping, I was hoping and telling people, I was like, yeah, I think it'll stop around seven, something like that. I'm at six now already at my local bank. I mm -hmm. was hoping seven or eight, but I think it'll probably go higher than that. What do you think that does to the land market? I think it's just going to slow way down and become dead. Like rentals, the last two months, I haven't bought anything because everybody, everybody got on board of thinking the stuff's worth a million dollars. And then when rates double, 
um, there's no money in it. Even if you got a great deal, there's still not much money. Me and my brother looked at seven units south of here, and it would have been a good deal a year ago, but with rates doubling, there's just no profit in it. So I was like, it's not even worth messing with. So I think rentals are going to come to a complete stop until a year or two from now, whenever people decide they're going to have to ask less to sell their property. Mm -hmm. so, so okay, I'm just kind of just kind of stacking cash right now. I'm actually selling uh, about a dozen rentals, dozen unit stores. Um, three fourplexes and a couple single family homes just putting cash in the bank and i'm hoping on the back side of this um either i'm hoping either if money if i can make money if the deals make sense at the top of the interest rate they drop them down then i can refinance or sell them and it'll be worth a lot more mm. so what does that see but i don't really think i'm on big buying i was hoping to buy 100 150 rental units this year and i don't think i'll do near that just because so you're just stacking, right. stacking cash for more buying opportunities down the road yeah, yeah. I'm just not seeing any opportunities right now. So just wait and wait and not waste my money on marginal deals.